This past Wednesday, I had the joy of going out to our diocesan camp, Camp DeWolf, because I wanted to check in on two of St. Jude's parishioners. One, Nicholas over there, was finishing up his two-week stay out at Camp DeWolf. He got back on Friday. And then Kevin uh, is being a Kevin Zorn is a camp counselor, and he's still out there for two more weeks. And it was great to be out there to see all the energy and excitement surrounding discovering how much God loves them and how they can make a difference in the lives of others, not only there at Camp Wolf, but in their neighborhoods as well. What I really enjoyed though, I mean, more than even going and seeing uh, Kevin and, and Nicholas, which was truly a good thing, Nicholas. <laughs> but it was talking to all the campers because, you know, it is so true, kids do say the darndest things. And many of the things that they said, I'm simply not going to repeat. <laughs> for fear of getting Nicholas in trouble. No. <laughs> you know, there was a Sunday school teacher once that was asking uh, her kids if they knew the name of God. And little Jonathan raised his hand and said, I know, his name is Howard. And the teacher looked and said, what? Yeah, our Father in heaven, Howard be thy name. <laughs> Kids say the darndest things, <laughs> but they try. They really try, try to get it. You know, we teach our kids from an early age, hopefully in our homes, to say their prayers. And when I was a child, I had two prayers that I prayed over and over again. When I went to bed, it was, "Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray, thee, Lord, my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray, dear Lord, my soul to take." I'm glad I wasn't quite understanding what that was all about when I was <laughs> The other was before any meal, and I still pray this prayer before every meal today, come Lord Jesus be our guest and let these gifts to us be blessed, amen. Prayer, simple prayers, but prayers that would connect in myself to, to God and also praying for others as well. That's what the Lord's Prayer does. The prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. They asked Jesus how to pray because John, his cousin, must have taught his disciples how to pray. And Jesus gave them that wonderful prayer that we all know as the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. It's a prayer that many of us will say every single day of our lives. It's a prayer I've said on some airplanes when they've been a little bumpy, <laughs> wondering what might happen. It's a prayer which connects millennia of Christians together. It is the most prayed prayer on any Sunday throughout the world. You know, Episcopalians, Anglicans, get criticized a lot that we don't know how to pray. I'm not saying that we don't pray, but that we can't pray extemporaneously. You know, there was a prayer meeting down in the south where the mayor was inviting all of the local clergy to come and offer prayers and the mayor introduced the first pastor, Pastor Smith from the Assemblies of God and it was this beautiful long prayer filled with uh, eloquent words and descriptions and after the pastor was done praying or more like preaching the mayor said, oh, that was wonderful. Now we're going to ask the Methodist pastor to come up. And the Methodist pastor also got up and gave this wonderful, wonderful, amazing, amazing prayer. Everyone really felt that connection. And then that pastor sat down and finally the mayor looked at everyone and said, 
Well now, Mother Jones from St. Mary's Episcopal Church is gonna get up and she's gonna read one of her prayers, those, you know, the prayers that they have in the book. Because, you know, the Episcopalians, they have to pray prayers that are written. And the priest got up and she said, yes, Mr. Mayor, I'm gonna open my prayer book and I'm gonna pray the prayer that our Lord taught us, our Father who art in heaven. Everyone was silenced. It's not about the amount of words. It's not about how eloquent it is. Prayer is meant to connect ourselves to God. Prayer, when we take prayer seriously, can change us more than we can possibly imagine. But the problem with prayer, so I think when we're little kids, we get it. But as we get older, our worries increase. And perhaps we've been disappointed over the years with maybe God didn't answer the prayers the way we wanted our prayers answered. And so our prayer life starts to diminish or actually becomes non-existent. We don't have the words. We don't know how to pray. We've lost the formula of prayer. In my own daily devotional prayer time with God, I always have a simple formula, which I want to share with you this morning, and hopefully it will help you, if you don't have a devout prayer life, to get back into praying to our loving God. And it's that simple word, pray. First and foremost, when I am praying to God, I offer my praises to God. See, God created everything. God gives all of us life. Everything you and I have is because of God. God gave God's Son for us that we might know God. God deserves our prayers and our praises. Just like we are here on Sunday, first and foremost, to worship and praise God in our daily devotional time, the first thing we should be doing is praising God. You know, I praise God, I thank God for my life. I thank God for my family. I thank God for the privilege of being here. I praise God for all the blessings. I praise God when I make it and survive driving on the southern state. <laughs> We need to praise God and thank God constantly. <clears throat> After I praise God, I reflect. And I do this in the morning. I reflect about my previous day. I reflect on those things that I feel I did right to follow God. But I also reflect on those things where I know I missed the mark where I know that I was separated myself from God, from my fellow human, and from creation. Those things that I have sinned about, when I put myself first instead of God, or my own personal needs in front of others' needs, or when I had a chance to help my neighbor and I didn't. Every day I mess up a bit. But when I reflect on it, I ask God for forgiveness. And because we have a God who loves, I can be assured that I am forgiven. After I praise God and reflect, that's what I do what Jesus talked about in the end of today's gospel. I ask. As he says, ask and it will be given to you. Now there is nothing too big or too little that you and I can ask for. We can ask for anything. Doesn't mean we're going to get it. But we can still ask. I ask for healing for people who need healing. I ask for comfort for my friends who are going through a difficult period. I ask for understanding of a difficult situation. I ask for a lot of things. And God always answers. Sometimes it's yes. 
Sometimes no. Sometimes it is no. Sometimes it's not yet. And sometimes it's a completely different answer than I ever expected. How much will God give to us, those that God loves, as long as we ask and are persistent about it? As Jesus said, who in this room would give their child a snake if they asked for a fish? Nobody. Ask God. God will give us those things that we need. It might not be those things we want. I asked God about the lottery last night. <laughs> I guess I don't need it. <laughs> after we praise God, after we reflect, after we ask, here comes the hardest thing about prayer. And that's yield to God's will. You know, we are a society so full of instant gratification. We want everything and we want it now. You know, social media has changed the world. We can find out what is going on across the world like that. We can order something and we get upset if it's not here within 24 hours. Almost everything we need, we can get right away. But that's not the way that God works. Remember, 1,000 years of our life is like a day in God's. If we yield to God and say, God, your will be done as Jesus said in the Garden of Gethsemane, then we can have the patience and the wisdom to accept what might come our way. <clears throat> to be able to see the answer to our prayers when we receive them. <clears throat> my sisters, my brothers, why not in your life start to really pray? Praise God. Reflect on your day. Ask for what you might ask for and yield for the Spirit's answer. You might be surprised about how quickly your heart is connected to God's heart, that your soul is connected to God's soul, and that although you might be feeling blue or you might be feeling down, that suddenly, over time, things don't seem as bad, that you know that God has your back, that God is walking with you, that God is holding you. My sisters and my brothers, let us pray today and always to our Father who art in heaven. Amen.